Well, uh, they can't read your mind. Now, people sometimes think they can read. No, they can't read your mind. But they, as they say, uh, they're, I'm a, as I told you, I'm a licensed psychologist. Uh, they're great psychologists. And Satan is the best psychologist uh, in, the, in the dark world. And uh, he's been messing with us for thousands of years. And he knows our weak points. He knows how to manipulate us and will do, we'll do so. Hey there, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. And for this video, I'll be sharing with all of you what Monsignor Rossetti said about his encounter with Satan himself, how he sounded like and what eventually drove him away. But before that, I'd like to share something that I find rather disturbing on the Internet, which also tells us how desperate Satan must be. I can barely find the right words to describe this when I first watched the video, but after a while, I started to think that instead of being angry at them, I really feel sorry for these people because Jesus died on the cross for all of us, and yet they rejected his love and mock him so openly like this with thunderous applause. How else can you describe something like this? Anyway, that's enough of that. I'm not giving these people any more airtime than is required. Now let's get back to the video then, and as always I've provided the link to the full video of these clips in the description box below in case you want to check them out later on. The toughest case I ever had, and the only time it'll ever happen to me was Satan himself was, was present possessing the person. Some people say Satan's out, well he's it's present in some way, but Satan was, was, was personally present in the, in the case. And uh, I commanded them about two thirds of the way through the de demons were weak enough. So I command, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you. I want to know the name of the leader of, of the, this possessing group of demons. Because when you know their name, you can get rid of them faster. And they said, the sneer, they go, you're not ready for this, Rossetti. You're way out of your league. It's the king of hell himself. Well, it's interesting uh, when, when it came forward, he did come forward at the end before. The, our, our interest in our blessed mother threw him out. And, um, and it, uh, it was a sneer and a, a hiss. It sounded like a snake. He actually came forward with this hiss. And when he spoke, he had this hiss in his voice. It did, it sounded like a snake. And I would say he was uh, unbelievably uh, intelligent. I mean, the, the, the other demons tend to be kind of, you know, they're kind of a little dumber, but uh, Satan himself is incredibly uh, brilliant, uh, uh, but evil and incredibly evil and uh, not to be trifled with so uh but in the end you know in the end by the way two weeks before he was cast out they were getting weak enough again i said in jesus name i command tell me you, you tell me when you're going to leave and by what means and they said we're going to leave in two weeks they told me the date and i said and by what means and they said she will come we all knew who she was you know they wouldn't say the name of mary they wouldn't they wouldn't so anyway two weeks later we're praying time is up and the demons are all gone except for lucifer and his little coterie around him and uh, and the possessed person there got and said she, she's here yeah and so on and she she and he couldn't stand it he he couldn't lucifer can't stand the holiness of the of this woman you know he just he just the darkness can't stand such light and uh, the, the power of christ radiating through her just threw him out there's an entry in Monsignor Rossetti's Exorcist Diary that I'd like to share with you in regards to Satan and something we have to be aware of, and that is he is the great accuser. It goes like this. One of Rossetti's exorcists told him that he woke up one morning and was mentally pounded with self-accusatory thoughts of how bad he is and with the thought that he isn't forgivable. Interestingly enough, that exorcist had been working that week with an afflicted person who was struggling with demonic obsessions, especially the mental torment of self-hatred. In the Bible, Satan is called the great accuser and one of Satan's most common tactics is to incessantly hound people with their sins because his goal is to destroy their sense of self-worth and bring them to despair. We all know that Satan hates humans and he envies God's predilection for them. He rejects God for his humble incarnation in humanity and in accusing humanity of its sinfulness, Satan futilely tries to strike back at God. Sometimes in exorcisms, Monsignor Rossetti and his team directly experienced the great accuser, just like the experience he shared in the previous clip, and demons may call out their failings and taunt them when they make mistakes. They especially like to point out at times when they appear to have the upper hand in the battle. But what did the team do in return for their defense? They did nothing and instead, Rossetti's response is, Indeed, I am a sinner, but I am not your problem. Jesus is. 
In his holy name, I cast you out. When that exorcist earlier woke up to a barrage of self-accusatory thoughts, the circumstances suggest that he was acting as a burden bearer. But Monsignor Rossetti and his team trust that his sacrifice was a grace for the afflicted person and perhaps for others similarly afflicted as well. The reality is many people are suffering from demonic mental torments, and sometimes they are simply of a psychological origin. But more times than people realize, Satan is directly attacking their sense of self-worth and hope, and our response to the great accuser as fallen human beings is simple, I am a sinner, but my hope is in Jesus. I'll give you my recipe for getting possessed. I don't suggest you take it. One, stop practicing the faith. The faith is your shield, as Ephesians 6 says. You know, God is our shield and protects us from the wiles of the evil one. And then start, so let go of your shield. Then start committing serious sins. You know, we all know what those are. There's no, no secret there. And then number three, start doing some occult stuff. That's like giving a ticket to Satan. You know, start doing seances. Start doing Ouija boards. Start to doing Charlie Charlie. You know, start practicing magic. Uh, all those things are not from the Lord. Uh, and they're expressly prohibited in the Bible. And we, and we see the results of it. You know, I, we're picking up the pieces of people who said, oh, I grew up in my family. We practiced uh, Santeria. We practiced divination. We practiced tarot cards. This was normal in my family. Of course, now, you know, 20 years later, uh, people have all sorts of problems. Of course you do. You, uh, any sort of magic, whether you think it's good magic or bad magic, it's not from the Lord. And so where does it come from? Where does the power come from that, that, uh, that witches use? And then some, some of them do use uh, uh, real spiritual power. It comes from Satan, whether you know it or not, and whether you intend it or not. I know you don't believe it, but I'm telling you, uh, we see it again and again. Now, before we come to an end for this video, I'd like to share a very short clip of the late Archbishop Fulton Sheen, and I think it's fitting that we close this video to hear about our Savior Jesus Christ instead of the devil. I can find new life in Christ, which brings me to the way that our Lord acts after the sin. Now he is our defender. He said, come to me. All ye who labor, if your sins are as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. And if they are as red as crimson, they shall be made white as wool. Well, that's all for now, everybody. For those of you who are still watching this video, thanks so much for taking the time to do so. I sincerely do hope you've learned something from what I shared here and again. Thank you so much and God bless you.